It's game day on entertaining people, and whether it's your favorite football team, your baseball team, or in this case, an onion softball, today we are gonna cook up the absolute best party foods for a game day. Everything from buffalo grabs, great oven fries, dynamite chili verde, cheese sauce, chili cheese sauce, you name it, we've got it all right here on Entertaining People. I'm Porter William, and I've been entertaining, event planning, and cooking for over 25 years. Finally, I get to share my secrets with you. No matter if you have a one-room apartment or a grand-scale estate, we'll learn how to entertain from San Francisco to the beaches of Spain, from menu planning to tablescapes, I'll teach you how to entertain from the heart. From a memory, make a memory. Join me as we entertain the world one table at a time, next on Entertaining People. Day here on Entertaining People, and the first item on our menu is my dad's chili verde. We actually begin with just a pork roast of some sort, boneless, and the loin works really well. And one of my favorite tricks to get it into the strips that I really love is to have it partially frozen. Just slice it up, and we're going to make some beautiful pork verde strips, which we're going to just lightly brown and saute. I love this recipe. It really reminds me of hanging out with my family and uh, my dad always seemed to want to see how hot he could make the chili. In fact, I think for a few years there, it was a big competition and no matter what, he was determined to make that chili as hot as he could. Today we're going to make it so it's good for guests and easy to serve and it all starts with these great slices. I like strips of pork in my chili verde not to have it break up. We're going to simply add some vegetable oil to a heated skillet and be careful, it should be nice and warm. There we go. We're just going to saute up these beautiful pork strips little by little and bit by bit. Now some people like to dust these with flour. You can do that if you like, but in the essence of speed, it's just easy to let these cook and get a nice brown on them. A little bit of caramelization. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep a slow cooker or a Dutch oven right next to it. And as these continue to cook, we'll just place them right into our pot. The last of our pork is browned. That looks perfect. We're gonna take that off and add that in. Then we're just gonna reserve this skillet for later. That looks wonderful. I'm just gonna chop a couple large cloves of garlic right here and throw those all in my pot. Turn my heat off there. We'll need one can of large tomatoes. Store-bought's fine, anything works. Now what I love to do is I love to crush these in my hands on the way in. But because this is a slow-cooked chili, by the way, a crock pot works great with this. If not, you can just do it in a Dutch oven like I do. I just pour those in and it's always fun to grab one of those. Just break it up with your hand and pour those in. Super. Next is going to be two cans of whole Ortega chilies. And if you can find hatch chilies, those are really wonderful. If not, just make sure that they're a complete green chili. And I always like to put a little bit of the juice in there just for heat. And you'll just return these back to your chopping block. It's usually about three to a can, so I like two cans. As you may know, the heat in a chili is going to be found in the seeds on the inside. So what I like to do is I like to remove the seeds and half of my chilies and leave the other half in. It just balances out the heat and it makes it really quite tasty. Just slice these in strips. The theme on this dish is everything's in strips. Our pork's in strips, our chili is in strips. And the reason why that's important is when you bite into it, first of all, it stays on your spoon. You've got larger chunks, and they can really taste the texture and the cool, smoky flavor of these chilies. So I go once across, and then a simple cut with my knife. It's that easy, and I just transfer into my pot. Look at that beautiful green and red coming together from those tomatoes. Last is the weapon of destruction. These are fantastic jalapeno chilies. Be very, very careful. Look at that. That is so fun. And these actually come marinated. You can just put the whole things in if you'd like. I'm just going to slice up one or two of these. Awful hot, so I really do recommend that you make a few slices, 
put it in, test the heat, and you can always add some more later. I'm just gonna do two small jalapenos and throw those in. We'll grab that little carrot in there, a little color on top of our chili. And now for the real punch in this recipe, it is all about great spices. And I love using these imported spices that are available at your local grocer. I have a cumin, which is a major flavor in this chili verde. I also have a Mexican oregano, and of course our cayenne. Cut a little slit off the top, add a little bit of cayenne. That's fun. And our oregano, actually right off the bottom there. Now I put about two and a half, three tablespoons of the oregano. These green fresh flavors are really typical of the American Southwest and of course Mexico. And I like them to really come out very, very strong. You can also correct this seasoning as you go. That's what's so great about this chili. There are no rules. It's all very simple and it all comes together in just a few seconds. I'm gonna pop in a couple bay leaves right on the top. Getting out of there. And a couple cups of chicken broth. Look at that. I'm using an unsalted chicken broth. It's completely up to you. I like to adjust my salt as I go. And we'll also add just probably a little bit of water on that. But the first simmer down will be all with the chicken broth. We'll give that a big stir. That looks great. We're gonna serve this in individual cups for Super Bowl. Right now we're just gonna cover, let this simmer, and we'll be right back. Well, I'm just finishing chopping up a white onion to go in my red chili, and I'm gonna pop this all into a nice hot saute pan. And we'll get that going. And then to that, I'm going to add just a pound of ground round. Now this is really what I call chili for chili cheese fries. It's gonna be small in texture, smooth, and easy to work with. I'm just really breaking up the meat so that it's very, very fine. This is really stadium chili. Just imagine what you would have over a chili dog or on chili cheese fries. And I like to just almost pulverize that as we sit there and brown that. I've got a few more onions I can put right on top. I love the memory on this recipe. I used to live in Tucson, Arizona, as many of you know, and there's a place on the way to Nogales called the Santa Fe Chili Factory. And to this day, almost 20 years later, I bring this fantastic chili mix. You just add it, it's just a great Texas, Colorado type chili. Either state works, we don't mind here on entertaining people. We're gonna put a whole package of that in. And to that, very simply, one can of tomato paste. And what I'm after is a real, tasty, thick consistency. We almost want to brown the tomato paste as we're working. Boy, I can smell that chili verde. I can hear it too. We're bubbling over here. So we're gonna get that in the bottom of the pan. You see that there. And notice how the meat turns all black with that seasoning. That's exactly what you want. We're gonna add a little bit of water to this, cover it, and let it simmer. Nothing better than cheese fries and chili cheese fries when you're at a game day. I've got good old processed American soft cheese. There really is no recipe here. I feel guilty even telling you about it, but it's just a matter of chopping up in some great, large, tasty chunks. This cheese, adding it to a glass bowl and popping it in the microwave. Now there's a couple serving suggestions that I'd like to give to you. If you wanna go with a Mexican theme, again, those greens, cumins, and oregano's, they all work perfectly. If you wanna do something that's uh, spicy, cayenne, chili pepper sauce, that all works really easy. You'll need about probably a large box, maybe two, depending on your crowd. We're getting ready to feed about 10 people. Cheese in a glass bowl and into the microwave for probably about three minutes on low. You'll want to stir it from time to time. I can smell the cumin and that oregano coming through. Let's check on my dad's chili verde. And that looks fantastic. Look at the greens of the jalapenos. Everything, those large cloves of garlic. I love this chili verde. I'm gonna break it up just a little bit, chunk up those tomatoes, and it's chili times two. And here is our, oh, that's perfect. Our Colorado or our Texas red chili. We're gonna drizzle that over some amazing fries, which I'm gonna start right now. The way I like to slice these russet potatoes is once in half, put your two flat sides down on your board, nice and safe. Keep those knuckles down, fingers out, and just 
three or four slices. I like big steak fries, just like the kind that you get at the ballpark. Once you have those russets prepped, go ahead and just transfer them to any cookie sheet. It's all about easy when we're entertaining. Spread them out evenly so they'll cook nice and even. And then all I'm really gonna do with these is just season them up with some great salt. And one of my quick, fast tricks is a little hit of cooking spray right over the top of them. And this is really what I call an oven fried potato. I'm gonna pop these in the oven. They're gonna bake about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Keep your eyes on them, turn them so they're crispy, and I'll be right back. It's game day here on Entertaining People, and we are into the home stretch, waiting for our super game day party with friends, family, everybody's coming to join us. Well, it wouldn't be a game without hot, spicy buffalo wings and some great fries. So I put those fries in right before we left. Let's see how they're doing. These look great. Look how easy that is. Simple oven fried steak fries, done in about 20 minutes. I'm gonna set these aside right here while we get to work on our quick fix buffalo wings. What I have here are some thawed dried breast tenders and they're all sliced up in the nice bite sized strips. They're gonna go with a great cup for everybody to have. We're calling them our buffalo grabs and it's gonna be really super because people will not have to have their sticky fingers all over the furniture. They're gonna carry this great cup with these wonderful sticks of carrots and celery and I'm gonna make you some of my favorite homemade blue cheese dressing. It happens in a snap. First thing is a big bowl. We're gonna put about a pound or two of our chicken tenders into the bowl and we are gonna completely fast forward this process with just a great bottle of buffalo sauce. Now normally with the traditional buffalo wing you could put melted butter in and we could do that today if you'd like but the flavor is really all gonna be there. Give these a great toss and turn, look at that. That's fire and heat. And you know me, I never put anything in my oven without spraying it first, so we're gonna spray a sheet pan. That simple. And then we are simply going to spread our tenders out on that sheet pan. You'll notice almost this entire episode, we have virtually nothing cooking on the stove top except our chilies. What's really nice about that is that it keeps the kitchen clean and the ovens do all the work for you. So I'm gonna pop these out, make sure that they're evenly distributed so that the heat in the oven hits everything. We wanna make sure that our chicken is always cooked through. And these are gonna go into the oven, I don't know, four, 450, about 20 minutes. I'll be right back. I'm looking for a touchdown on this episode of Entertaining People. And to go on our buffalo grabs, I'm gonna make a great blue cheese dressing. It's as simple as some pre-crumbled blue cheese. And I'm gonna take about two to three large heaping spoonfuls of mayo and a little bit of milk. You can use half and half if you'd like, but just enough to get this flowing in liquid and a really strong whisk. We're gonna beat that up. Now, I like to let this chill a little bit, but we want a really thick, fantastic blue cheese sauce so that it drizzles all over the tops of our fries. That's done. Now, let me tell you about what we're gonna serve this in today. I found these individual martini shakers the other day, and I thought these would be perfect to put our grabs in. And here's the best part. They come in their own carrier. So this is what I've done. I have my buffalo grabs with our stadium fries, our carrots, and our celery. I'm gonna pop our buffalo boneless wing right on top, and I'm gonna just hand them out. Everybody's gonna be able to walk around with it in their hand, and it's gonna be a great time. Then our main dish for our game day is really a panini bar. And what I've put together here is my favorite California sandwich. If you were raised in California, you know it's a California roast beef on sourdough, jack cheese, and a beautiful whole Ortega chili. My guests are gonna be able to pick and choose whatever they want, and they're gonna make their own panini. Then the last one is actually from a new memory when I was recently at Chelsea Market in New York, and I had this fantastic red and yellow pepper ciabatta panini. I picked it up, got in a cab, went to Central Park, and had my lunch. So we've got a panini bar with all the fixings, Thousand Island for our corned beef, our horseradish for our roast beef, and for our Santa Fe chicken, this amazing ancho chili sauce. I'll be right back. It 
wouldn't be game day on entertaining people without party snacks. And I'm going to show you three snacks in one minute. The first thing that I've done is I've got a high-end gourmet potato chip. I like the Maui's. And then I popped up some popcorn right here. You can do it in your microwave or buy it in the bag. And then lastly are these great little spoon-sized shredded wheats. First thing is going to be a peppered potato chip. Follow my instructions. This won't go wrong. Some olive oil spray right on top of those chips. Not a lot. And then I'm using three. I'm using a green, a black, and a red pepper. And I'm going to pepper these chips just a few seconds, literally five minutes in the oven. All these are going to season, adhere, and they're going to be so tasty. Now on my popcorn, what I use is something that I call Porter's Mississippi Mud. You can find this at entertainingpeople.com. This is a killer seasoned salt, and I love it all over my popcorn. This is Mississippi Mud game day popcorn. We're also going to spray that with a little bit of that same olive oil spray just to moisten it and have it adhere. And then last is my take on a party mix. This is a hot, spicy cayenne. I start with olive oil. Now, if you'd like, you can do these all in a bowl, but it's just as simple to put them on a tray quick douse of olive oil, our seasoned salt. Got a little much there, but that's why it's going to be spicy. And I've got cayenne already mixed in. We're going to grab one, two, and three and put them in the oven. We'll be right back. Well, my team is on their way for a game day on entertaining people. And look at this spread. This is just the panini bar. Wait till you see everything else. We've got our panini presses going. It's going to be so fun having my guests pick and choose our sauces, our buffalo grabs. I'm going to show you how to put together our paninis with some melted butter. We're going to select a bread, select a sandwich. Everybody's going to pick and choose. And you're actually going to meet my good friend, Greg Thurston, who's been my trainer for many years. And I'll prove to you that some of this is actually even healthy. What I really want to show you is another tablescape. This is a fantastic school day lunch tray that I found. And it's perfect for entertaining. You'll never have to worry about your sofas again. What I have is my Papa's Chili Verde right there. And then I was just adding this fantastic ancho chili sauce. Each guest can pick their own sauce from the Chipotle, the horseradish, or the Thousand Island. I've got a slaw going on, so easy. And then here's some of our chips and our popcorn. And I've got great friends who are coming in for the big game. First of all, my good friend and trainer, Greg Thurston, who I've known for over 20 years, and his lovely wife, Gina. Guess what? I know it sounds crazy, but we're actually going to eat something healthy today. But first, Gina, you get to pick your own panini. So what's up? I've got a pepper, a Reuben. What do you feel like? A pepper. A pepper? OK. So I was telling the story earlier. I had my first experience with this at Chelsea Market in New York. And all I'm going to do is just put these beautiful yellow and red peppers on your panini and a little bit of fantastic provolone. We've buttered all these slices. We're just going to put it together and right in our panini press, you're going to make your own panini. That looks yeah. great. That looks dynamite. Good. So are you ready for this? I actually made a buffalo wing that wasn't fried. Be Act. proud of me. Awesome. Be proud of me. Low After fat. Get years, that low fat I out of there. Put back the fried wings. Yes. It's, it's dynamite. So talk to me. Did I actually do this right? Because this is my health and nutrition guy, and I've got kind of you know I've got a balanced meal for one here. Absolutely. Don't I? You want to balance a little bit of those proteins and carbohydrates together. They work together. They work together in your body. Greg, what's going to do? On, what's going to happen when I slam a beer with this? You know what? Carbohydrates. Beer, alcohol is carbohydrates. If you balance that out, I work with a lot of people that love to have a little beer, a little wine. If they take a little bit of those carbohydrates out of their diet when they're having their, uh, their cocktails or mm -hmm. their drinks, they'll be okay. Okay, so everything in balance. We don't normally do that on entertaining people, but we're ready today. And I'm smelling that coming up. Let's just take a quick peek and see how, oh, look at that. The lines are on there, the press is coming. And in fact, I think, Normally, this may take a little while longer, but Gina, welcome here. You've got your tray, your school lunch tray. Don't you feel like you're in line? <laughs> Who was the lunch lady that always gave you the sloppy <laughs> joe on entertaining people? There it's a go. beautiful New York style Chelsea Market roasted pepper ciabatta. Delicious. And that's all for you. Hey, the crowd's waiting. Let's get over there. Well, now is when the fun begins. We've had a great time cooking this dynamite game day. And of course, our tablescape, well, they've already cut into it. I can't even control this team. Let's do a quick recap. Here's our red chili. That's going to go all over our fries. We've got some cheese sauce. Can't have a stadium day without cheese sauce. And check out the grabs. Look how good those came out. 
everything right in one hand. I see that they're eating them over there. And what I did for drinks, to keep it simple, I did two kinds of beer. Beer from around the world, and I did root beer. And that's in fact what we're gonna top off. But I want you to see the tray, how well that worked. And look what I did. I took this catcher's mitts, and everybody's knives and forks are right in there. How simple is that? And it's gonna blow your guests away. By the way, all the sporting goods that I got here, I got at a used sporting goods store, cleaned them up. This entire table was under $50. But here's what I love. Remember our three and three? We've got our peppered chips. We have our party mix, cayenne and season, and my Mrs. Mississippi mud popcorn. I've got them in these great popcorn containers, but the best part is we've got batter's helmets everywhere. I can't think of a better way to top off a dynamite game than with what? A root beer float. Everybody's getting their own root beer on the top. Without root beer, it wouldn't be a party. I love a root beer float, a straw, right? a spoon just so you feel special. Remember that, that was so great as a kid. Well, I tell you what, this is a home run. What a great time here on Entertaining People. Log on to entertainingpeople.com for all these recipes, these great tablescape and entertaining ideas. I'm Porter William, and I'll see you next time. Here's to the game. The game. Cheers.